Hey there, I. Ah! That went wow, wild. and I'm flat too. <laughs> hey, I am Mark Gunn. And I'm Andrew McKee. And we are working on a brand new album. It is called Another Fair to Remember. Now, now, now you'd think that there wouldn't be a first fair to remember, but you'd be wrong. But <laughs> you would be wrong. In fact, uh, back in 2001, we released our first. Um, biggest renaissance festival cd called a, a fair to remember and it was a a huge album we uh sold like uh, yeah, it was twice the size of a regular cd it was practically it, um it, it was it, packed with songs it was like 10 by 10 inches it was crazy <laughs> but, no that's not what i mean what i mean it was it was packed with songs one of the things we did early on it's like a laser decided, disc we decided that we would, we would always have at least uh, that we'd have 15 songs in an album and that right. was where where we usually put out a little bit more than that. I think we had like 17 tracks on this album. Yeah. It, be it featured the top 10 uh, Renaissance Festival songs that we had heard. And then it included some uh, additional songs that we had found and mm -hmm. that we loved playing at Renaissance Festival. It's and the it was original song. And this new album is a continuation of that mission. Uh, we have, of course, we have a, a, several of the popular traditional songs that you'll find at Renaissance Festivals. Songs like uh, Star of the County Down, The Irish Rover, South Australia, and Rare Old Mountain Dew. Just just uplifting, fantastic songs. But then we are, you know, moving into the realms of being songwriters even more so. And so we've been writing a lot of new music. And uh, so we have several new songs, including uh, one of our uh, newest, most popular songs. And I, I say this because we we had so much fun uh, with creating, writing songs. And Love Song to Alcohol is definitely uh, one of the ones that I think has been a huge hit. What do you think of that one, Andrew? It's been a surprising hit. I mean, when we first started writing it, I really, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I thought, okay, yeah, this is a pretty good song, but, you know, I I really didn't expect it to take off as much as it did. I, you know, people are eating it up on stage. I mean, when, yeah. we, when we've been playing it, it people sing along and really get into it. And I'm like, I mean, part of it, it's interactive, so it's yeah. fun, um, but it really it has a catchy melody, and I think it has... Uh, the flow of the lyrics is a little different than what people expect, which yes, it makes I love it unique. That. I love and that. It, it really, I mean, I, it's, history says that artists are the last people who know what songs are going to be hits and what songs are not. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're the worst judges because the songs we usually love the most are the ones that people don't like. And the ones that were kind of like, yeah, it's okay. Everybody eats up. It, it's really strange, yeah. but the beautiful thing that we've always done is we've never, we, we agreed at the very beginning, every song we do, we like, yeah. And this is another one that we really like. And, uh, it's really shot off more than I really expected. I, I love that. And it is so, you know, you know, the other thing, What's that? it's a lot more fun to do on stage than I expected. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things, so one of the reasons, uh, you know, we came up with the idea of actually writing a song was, in part inspired by uh, um, if I had a million ducats, right? You know, because ducats, we we always ask our audience, which is also on a fair to remember. Uh, it is, we, yes. So we we uh, we ask our audience, you know, give us some words or something. And here we give them a little bit more constraints. It's like give us some alcohol types that you would like us to sing about, and then we compose a, a verse to uh, show what we think of that particular al type of alcohol and, uh, and how much we love it. And, and some, sometimes it's vodka and whiskey and um, and sometimes it's pan-galactic gargle blaster <laughs> right. or blue milk. Or what was the, what's the, uh, the, the int draft? <laughs> right, right. I mean, you get some really strange... Uh, uh, it's rare to have a show that there's at least one drink that I've never heard of. Yeah. I mean, you probably are more familiar, but for me, it's it's always like, okay, what's that? <laughs> How do you spell that? Is that does that have a D in it or a T? I can't tell. I'll be honest. There's there's some that have, a, a lot of them that I'm like, I never drunk that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I, I mean, you know what? I'm gonna write a song, a lyric about it. <laughs> that's that's the best because you always have to be on our toes. I mean, ten years from now, we're, we're going to be doing the song, and it's going to be like. Uh, there's still going to be new drinks that we've never heard of. I love right, that. No kidding. Um, <laughs> it's never going to get boring or old for us as well as you. Yeah, so that's great. Exactly. So you have songs like that. We have songs that are inspired by uh, one song called Seven Sisters. It's inspired by the Seven Sisters Standing Stones at Sherwood Forest Fair, where one of the, one of the uh, 
Renaissance festivals that we've been playing since it opened. Um, and that's been just absolute blast there. There's a, a song inspired by the animated Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. Uh, if you remember that from back, from back in the 80s. Right. Uh, it's, it's a song called Dragon's Graveyard, mm-hmm. which it's, it's admittedly, it's, it's not nearly as comical as you might imagine from a kid's cartoon show, but it did, but it captures, I think, the essence of the story uh, behind it. It did. It really did. It was so, a um, good show. I mean, yeah, if, if you're one, it's one of those Saturday morning cartoons things that in the 80s that were so big and it, it, uh, it definitely was influential. Yeah, we have a, a song that you wrote, Andrew. Uh, the Irishman who doesn't doesn't drink. I did write that. Yes, and that that's one of those songs that's just uh, it kind of makes fun of the fact that at the time when I wrote it, I, I didn't drink. Yeah, which is, all, which is great when we were tra- driving cross country and yeah, I did all the driving, you did all the played, drinking, and we, uh, we played a pub, and I'm like, okay, let's go, and you're like, <laughs> and I drove I, I, back. <laughs> that was amazing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's a fun song. It's a fun song. And, and that, that's really the thing about music. Um, sometimes you, there, there's usually two routes. You want to make it fun or you want to make it interesting. Yeah. And sometimes you can cross over and make it both. And I think we've managed to do that in a lot of these. Yeah. Uh, Salon Chavala is a song that I wrote at the Louisiana Renaissance Festival, but it was designed to get tips <laughs> at, because I was really bad at, at hawking for tips and such. And uh, so, but it turns in, it turned out it's just absolutely one of my favorite songs to sing because it's just a very simple uh, call and response song. And it teaches right. you a little bit of Irish in the process. Salon Chavala, which means here's to your good health. So I love that. Um, and it's instructive too. It teaches people how to, um, uh, a little gay with her. Yeah, and, and uh, the, fi- the the last song that we know we have a uh, uh, re- plan to record that we plan to record for this album is a song, a Hobbit drinking song called Mushrooms. Um, and Mushrooms again, that's one of those songs that uh, we wrote at at Sherwood Forest Fair, is inspired by Old Dun Cow. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's just a fun sing alongable, uh, shout alongable song because you say mushroom, I say mushrooms, and you shout mushrooms, and it just turns out. It's, it's just a blast. We did it at Hobbit Drinking Songs at Dragon Con, and wow, what a response. People huh? love shouting <laughs> mushrooms. I, did, I, I, I honestly was not expecting that. They love <laughs> shouting mushrooms. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you saw it, Andrew, but I, I, posted, I posted something on, uh, on Facebook about the mushrooms, and, and, and a whole bunch of spammers hit it. <laughs> You type mushrooms on, on Facebook and you're going to get spammed like nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just, just hilarious. So there are going to be a lot more songs than, than that. We also have two. We're going to have at least two instrumental, maybe a third. We'll see how it comes out because we do enjoy composing instrumental music. I think we have a couple already recorded. Yes. Don't we? Yeah. So uh, they just we just have to get them, uh, finish them up. But um then we're going to have a, a lot of fun stuff. There's going to be a, a physical CD. There will be an album pan. We will do a limited run of, of shirts. So if you want to earn, own a Robin Nagy and Barge shirt, you should definitely make sure you support the Kickstarter because I'm, you know, if there's a couple over, we might do something, but I don't think we're going to be selling them after this. Yeah. So um, this is, this is, this is all exclusive stuff. So Thank you so much for for uh, supporting all our music over the years. We you know, we've been doing this since 1999. This is our what 25th year yes. of, of playing music together, um, and it's just fantastic. I love I love playing with you, Andrew. It's and I'm, a blast. I'm glad that we can keep making music, but we do need your help. So, uh, and Andrew, do you have any uh, final words, either final words or final words to say about the album? Well, the album, I. <laughs> It's one of those where, a fair to remember the original one, I mean, it, it was one of those where, okay, we need, a, um, we need a fair CD. We need something that's straight fair, and that has, you know, this is for fair. It'll work other places, but it, it's just, it has all our favorite fair songs. Because uh, we realized we had, a, we had a few hodgepodge CDs that just didn't really, that had some fair music, but also some not, and while they worked, we wanted to concentrate and have something specific. And it's really served as well. It's been one, it was one of our most popular CDs that we've done. Still is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, still is. Yeah. And so when we, we thought, let's do another one, what do we call it? I mean, it was kind of like, well, we, I remember we had this conversation for a while. What do we call it? And, uh, uh, 
you know, another fair to remember just kind of made sense. It was, yeah. uh, let's make it a continuation thing. I mean, Hey, if, uh, if Disney can do Fantasia and, and spend like, you know, 60 years between them, we can do that. Right. <laughs> I mean, so sure. Why not? I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> we, we can, we, we can take our time and do a second one that long after. So why not? And, and we still love Renaissance festivals. You know, Andrew oh, yeah. is performing at the Louisiana Renaissance Festival as the uh, Kickstarter is going. And then I'm going to be doing the Georgia Renaissance Festival Fall Fling this, this fall. So, so we're still at it. And um, we hope you will support our Renaissance Festival uh, love and uh, share it with a friend. If you know anyone in, in fairs who might enjoy another fair to remember, uh, then head on over to Kickstarter and share it with them. So. Thank you so much for all of your generous support. And uh, we will be back with more podcasting in the days to come. So, slant you.